So, uh, coronavirus is not going away anytime soon. You know, we are focused quite rightly on the urgent um, crisis right now, but six months time, corona, we're still going to be living in the world of coronavirus. Uh, a year and a half from now, we are still going to be living in the world of coronavirus, and it's not too early to prepare for that world. Now, talk, looking at corporate customers, post lockdown, they are going to need, you know, they're going to, you know, we're all going to start coming out of our bunkers, hope, you know, sometime. And we're going to need everyone to know what to do. Hand cleaning, face masks, isolation, danger signs, all of that stuff. So how is a company with a thousand employees going to know that everyone is actually up to speed? So they have uh, two choices. One thing, you know, you as the CEO of this company, you can tell your staff to Google coronavirus. You will have no idea what they're finding. You have no idea whether they understand it. You have no idea whether they actually do it at all. It'll be chaos. Or you can tell your staff to play Corona Trainer. And as I will explain after this, you'll know that they're doing a complete doctor curated course, which is regularly updated with the latest uh, information. You know that they will be interactively challenged all the way through the course. You'll know they'll see realistic interactive films and you'll see their certificates when they complete. And you'll pay say $1.99 a month per employee. Okay, you're saying, how do I know that you guys are going to do anything that's any good? You know, it sounds like you're just trying to foist some, you know, PowerPoints on us. So our production team has made some of the most um, award-winning and effective um, emergency skills training programs that have been produced in the last five years. And we're bringing that approach and that methodology to coronavirus. So uh, I'll give you a one minute taster. Uh, if there are any Star Wars fans um, in the audience, please keep an eye out for someone you may recognize from Star Wars. Come on, breathe then. What did you do? thinking about suicide. What would you get? Like, but you hardly know me, come on. Woody, are you thinking about killing yourself? I think about it all the time. So those are clips from some of the pieces that we've done before. And yes, that was Daisy Ridley uh, in her first ever professional role uh, for which she was paid £350 for the day. Um, so you're saying, oh yeah, fine, that's, you know, but where's the data? Yes, it's pretty. Yes, it might have, you know, sort of won some prizes, but who cares? So there are two main pieces of medical research on our work. Formal medical research in the UK shows that our Lifesaver CPR training app is 29% more effective than traditional face-to-face -face CPR training. It's obviously vastly cheaper, um, and face-to-face -face CPR training is vastly more effective than just Googling websites and YouTube videos. Uh, a no formal medical research in the United States, which was presented at the Res American Heart Association Resuscitation Science Conference in Philadelphia a few months ago, shows that our heart class CPR film is 46% more effective than traditional school CPR teaching, which is itself vastly more effective than just Googling YouTube videos and looking at web pages. So Corona Trainer is a unique medical training product. Basically it brings together an interactive film platform and a methodology for crisis simulation and training. It will train your staff, it will test them, it will give you a certificate at the end. So yes, there's a billion coronavirus YouTube videos and web pages out there. And, and sorry, don't get me wrong. I'm, some of them are absolutely fantastic, but you don't know which ones your staff are going to look at. You know, first I'll look at some brilliant, absolutely correct piece of advice some, some 
fantastic doctor. And then the next thing they're looking at coronavirus cure, um, because that's the miracle of YouTube. So Corona Trainer will be better than just Googling YouTube because it simulates the stress. As I hope you saw from the, um, the extracts, we really go push very hard to simulate the emotional chaos of a crisis situation. We test all the way through by constant questions in the film whether people are understanding and remembering. As a sort of novelty extra in this one, we will detect while you are playing whether you touch your face. And you can leave that, that obviously you have to enable your camera, and you can choose to leave that functionality enabled. It will be a complete doctor curated course, which gives a complete overview. So it's an answer to kind of, you know, corona chaos and corona anxiety. There's always something new. It's one course that gives you everything. And at the end, you get a certificate. So from the point of view of the CEO, it makes all the difference in the world. So does it look like con standard computer-based training? No, as you've already seen, it's, it's very different. It's all about simulating a crisis, forcing you to answer immediately, just as you would have to do in real life. Uh, what's in it? Uh, basically, we have a series of sections kind of from white, which is an overview through sort of green, normal life, hand washing, gloves, amber, what to do if you're in lockdown, um, symptoms of COVID-19, face masks, how to put them on, how to take them off, and then in, through into red section, what, you, what to do if you actually have COVID-19, trying to simulate that experience into your age and medical condition to get an overview of what you can expect to hopefully make it that much less frightening once it happens. And then the danger signs that mean that you or a relative need hospital. Then at the end, you get your certificate. Team, that's myself. We've got a number of doctors, uh, including doctors with first-hand frontline experience of treating COVID-19 patients. Um, and uh, technical partner at Unit 9, which is a leading production house. Okay, so that's how we would pitch it to a company. Um, just switching through into if you're an investor. So this is just very quick, and obviously we can go into far more detail um, if, you're, if you're of interest. Our overall, the investment we're looking for is 350K British pounds. Um, uh, site build, filming, marketing, management. Basic revenue models, obviously we can show you a lot of detail, but um, $1.99 a month, if we have 100,000 employees, that's 2.4 million a year. Business models, okay, so we've been looking at the business to business model. Um, the thing is that we want to get this stuff out free to as many people as we possibly can. So we would also make it available to just anyone who wanted it. Um, but with just with, with no actual sort of marketing spend, just through organic word of mouth, which is how most of our stuff has spread so far. Um, anyone could, and our idea is that we manage to square it so that regular people can play and learn for free, but they only have to pay if they want a certificate. But then also a health service product. You know, we're talking to the NHS. If the NHS says, look, great, just do this, the whole thing's going to be free, then fine. Obviously, we will be delighted to do it on, on that basis. However, as a business-to-business -business product, um, you know, it answers a clear need, we feel. So train your staff, save your company with Corona Trainer. Um, please get in touch via Michael, or that's my email address. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. We have a question from Cameron who asks, since you can detect if they are touching their face in a video, are you able to also ensure that the masks are put on correctly? Uh, oh, um, to avoid overclaiming, I will say no. Uh, it's a fascinating question. Um, I, the thing is that um, we're using AI driven face recognition um, using the device camera. And it's great at some things and pretty bad at other things. So we're extremely confident that we can detect face detection. Uh, I mean, it's a fascinating question, thank you. I think it would be too difficult for AI systems as they currently exist, but I will certainly check it out. Thank you for suggesting it. I think that they would be thrown by different kinds of masks. And I think the, the, the subtleties um, are such, you know, things like, I don't think it could ever detect 
had the user touched a sort of a, di a, a, a dirty part of the mask when they took it off. I don't think it could do that. So, uh, so it's, a, it's a great idea, but, um, and I will definitely check and suggest it. And thank you so much for that question. Um, but I think with the technology that stands there, we can't. Um, but we can definitely detect whether you touch your face. Uh, Michael adds uh, uh, fit tests for masks are very specific and they and they need to assess leakage as well. So that would be exactly added. yes. That, that's that's the thing that that are you touching your face is a, is a pretty basic simple thing. Whereas mask fit, as as I'm, as you know, and I'm sure everyone on this call knows, you know, there's a lot of detail um, which I think we would struggle with. We, we think that Isaac is still a, a bit busy now, so uh, we could ask and invite more questions from the floor for, for Martin. Maybe I'll ask this question of you, Martin, since yep. we're here. Um, have you got any customers yet or have you found any investors? No. Uh, so we're, th at the moment we are, um, we're, uh, no, at the moment we're going through a process like this. We're trying to find people. Uh, the problem is that, um, uh, you could say that everyone is so busy chopping wood that they don't have time to sharpen their axes. You know, we know what the, that, that there is this next phase coming in six months or so. And of course, you know, that's not in any sense, you know, of course what is happening now is absolutely vital, but we also need to, pre you know, um, prepare for phase two because, you know, as I'm sure everyone on this call knows, you know, if you look at Spanish flu, you know, it's the second wave and the third wave. That's with Spanish flu, those were the deadliest waves. So we can't get into the habit of thinking that I will be fine once this first wave is taken care of. Um, we need to be preparing now for, for something that will come out in the summer so it's ready for winter once this problem is going to kick off again big time. 